everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, here's good news for everyone who's looking for something really new in cool, refreshing summer drinks. A folder of grand summer drinks that can be made with Horlicks. And it's free for the asking. Just drop a postcard to Horlicks, Racine, Wisconsin. Have you got that? Horlicks, H-O-R-L-I-C-K-S. Racine, R-A-C-I-N-E, Wisconsin. This little folder gives several fine summer drinks that are just the thing for parties or for serving on warm summer nights. Drop a card tonight. Remember, it's free. In the meantime, get a package of Horlicks malted milk from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. Then you'll be all set to try out these cooling recipes when they arrive. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Squire's Kemp's Hippodrome was closed day before yesterday. And he has been ordered to appear in Lum's Justice of the Peace Court today to answer the charge of violating a city ordinance prohibiting the operation of a theater on the second floor of a building in Pine Ridge. The case has been called for 2 o'clock at the Jotham Down store. And as we look in on our old friends now, we find Dick Huddleston and Grandpappy Spears, the complaining witnesses, and Lum and Abner waiting on Squire Skimp, the defendant, to put in an appearance. <laughs> Listen. Well, I wish he'd hurry up and get you. I'm getting tired of waiting. Yeah, I've got to get back to the store, Lum. Well, he knows the trial's set for 2 o'clock. Well, if he ain't here pretty soon, why, you can get him for a contact in court or something, can't you, Lum? Well, yeah, I reckon I should, according to law, but I have to fine him for contempt of court on top of everything else. He would accuse us of framing up on him showing up, then. Well, I don't care what he thinks. If he don't show up over here, why, we ought to just go ahead and have a trial without him. Well, we can't have a trial less than a beef, in it? Wait a minute, that was our ring one. I don't know, I never paid no attention. Yeah, I think it was, Ron. Yeah, it must be Squire, so. Yeah, it might be. Well, now, if he tries to talk you into putting a trial off, Ron, just tell him he's supposed to. Hello? We got him down store, and I'm at her just to the peace talking. I'll make him come on over here. Oh, well, well, how are you? I never hardly know you. You don't favor yourself, hardly. Uh, oh, you are. That ain't quiet, Well, we're all sitting here waiting for him now. Yeah, the trial set for 2 o'clock, but he ain't showed up yet. Huh? Well, I guess so. I don't see no way for me to do anything else. He violated one of the ordinances here in Pine Ridge. And... No, I never neither. I never had a thing to do with it. Dick Huddleston and Grandpappy Spears was the ones that swore out the complaint. Yeah. He said what? Well, he knows better than that. He's just saying that to get your sympathies roused. Well, it would be underhanded if I was doing it for that reason, but... You mean if I... Well, I've got to perform my duty. He's made a violate of the law, and it's up to me to... Well, I do know. I never thought you'd take sides again me that way. I don't see no reason why this should affect us in no way. I... I'm sorry you feel that way about it. Well, I don't know. I'll have to study it over. I don't want to make no promises. Well, no, I don't want to promise something and then not do it. I just... Hello? Hello? <laughs> who, who was that, Mom? Uh, nobody. You mean you were talking all that time and there weren't nobody on the phone? Bad news of some kind, Lum? No, I think you're not. Abner, come here a minute. I want to speak to you. Excuse us a minute, fellas. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, that's all right, Lum. Lum, you look like you'd all go. What in the world is the matter with you? Abner, would you be much put out if I turned Squire loose this afternoon and find him not guilty? Why, I don't see how you could, Lum. We know that brain well you guilty. There ain't no doubt about that. Uh, why, was that him calling, making some more threats? No, it's something worse than that. I ain't scared of his threats. Well, what's the matter, then? Well, that was Evelina. Evelina? Yeah. Squire's been over there talking to her. Got her to believe in that we closed up that place of his just to get him out of the way so we can make more money at our picture show. Oh, well, he's been telling everybody that now. Well, you know, Squire's a member of the school board, and he told Evelina if I never dismissed these charges against him, why, he'd see personal if she never got her job back next fall. 
Well, uh, I'm a low down good for nothing. I'll swan to. Oh, now, she told me just now on the phone if I convicted him this afternoon that me and her was through for good. Our engagement is broke off. Well, I never would have thought Evelina would ever want you to do something that weren't right, Mom. Well, she wouldn't do that. Man. She wouldn't, but he, he got her believing that it, he's in the right and we're well, in the wrong. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Well, hello, Squire. We've been waiting for you. Yes, I guess I'm a little late. I expect we better get on up there, Evelyn. I hope I haven't caused any undue anxiety on the part of our distinguished magistrate. Holding up the proceedings of his court of justice. Listen to that. Yeah, I hear him. Uh, this is your own judgment, Mama. Stand by you, whatever you do now. Thank you, Evelyn. Come on. <clears throat> well, gentlemen, if everybody's here now, I reckon we may as well get the court opened up and try the case. Yeah, you better come on. Let's get started. Uh, Your Honor, I hope you will accept my sincere apology for my slight tardiness. That's all right, Squire. Yeah, Lom could have fined you if he'd been a mice to do it. But he never. Court will please come to order. Uh, Mr. Skimp, I wonder if you'd mind to sit over here in this chair. Not at all, Your Honor. Not at all. Your slightest wish is my command. <laughs> uh, sit on the floor if it pleases, of course. <laughs> no, this chair will be all right. Now, uh, gentlemen, I now declare uh, this Justice of the Peace Court duly open to try the case of that of uh, M.K. Skimp, vice versa, the city of Pine Ridge. For the violate of ordinance number, uh, what is it? No, number 32, ah. which reads as follows. It will be considered unlawful for any person or persons to operate or present a theatrical entertainment on anything other than the ground floor of any building within the corporate limits of this city because of the fire hazard. Violation of this ordinance shall be punishable by a fine of not less than $50 and not more than $500, and said place of business shall be permanently closed. Uh, why, Your Honor, I'd like to say a word. Uh, just a minute, Squire, uh, Mr. Skim. We'll hear from uh, some plaining witnesses first, and, and you'll have a chance to answer the charges brought again. Uh, Milford Spears, will you please rise and be swore? He's talking to you, Grandpa. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I sure, uh, yeah. Uh, according to this complaint, you've charged M.K. Skimp with uh, operating a picture show on the second floor of the lodge hall, which is a violation of Ordinance 32, which I just now read. Kindly state to the court what you know about it. Well, all I know is that uh, he's got a picture show up there, and it's uh, in the law, and I think it ought to be closed up. It is closed. Quiet, please. Don't be making statements, Mr. Peabody, till you're swore in by the court. Well, you don't think I'm telling something I don't so, do you? Mr. Peabody, you'll please stop talking unless the court gives you permission. Do you mean that I've got to ask you before I can say anything? will you hash up before I pop you on or fine you for a contempt of court? Have you got any more remarks to make, Mr. Spears? Very yeah, did the hen kind of tell me when I can talk. Uh, no, I don't believe I can take enough now to ask Mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. You better be quiet at me. You're bothering Mom. Well, uh, me and him been parted too long for him to sit up there and try to tell me. Violence in the court, please. The next witness is uh, Mr. J.R. Huddleston. Who? Oh, me. <laughs> Stand up and be swore, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state to the court, Mr. Huddleston, just what you know in regards to this case. Well, while I have no personal interest in the case whatever, or no ill feelings of any kind against Squire here, I feel that the operation of a picture show or any other kind of an entertainment that would attract a large crowd is a hazard to the lives of the people who attend. And this particular building where Squire was operating his show is a very old frame building, and there's only one exit from the upstairs. A little narrow stairway that would be entirely too small to allow the crowd to get out and face a fire. And that's the reason that I signed a complaint. Uh Uh-huh. Have you heard anybody else besides yourself and Mr. Spears here that thinks you're trying to say you can run a picture show up there? Well, yes, I have. I've talked to several about it. Of course, there's a lot of folks that haven't stopped to realize the danger. Well, that don't make no difference about that, no way. If it's against the law, it's got to be closed. I'll decide the case then, Mr. Spears. 
You know, Parsi, that Mr. Skimp was running a picture show on the second floor of a building, Mr. Huddleston? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, I'll be back for him. Long can't be collect nothing. That'll be all, Mr. Huddleston. Uh, Mr. Skimp, uh, you've heard the charges brung against you, and you've heard the law read. Do you, uh, are you guilty or not guilty? Well, Your Honor, that's what I thought you were here to decide on. Yeah, yeah, so sure, that's right. <laughs> Sure. Well, are there any remarks you'd like to make before I pass judgment? Why, yes. Uh, I'd like to ask the court a question, if it's uh, permissible. All right. Stand up and be sure, then. Well, well, I'm not going to testify, Your Honor. This is just a question that I want to ask you. Oh, well, yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, did you receive a telephone call shortly before I got here a few minutes ago? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, was it a young lady that called you? Yeah, it was Evelyn. <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. I'm perfectly willing to leave the case in your hands, and I trust that the complaining witnesses, my good friends, Mr. Huddleston and Mr. Spears, will be satisfied and abide by your verdict. <laughs> well, if that's all the evidence is, all, I reckon it's left up to me to give the verdict. Any questions anybody'd like to ask? Well, I just choose your own judgment, Mom. Well, gentlemen, after reading the law and hearing the evidence in this case, I find the defendant guilty. And by the power invested in me as Justice of the Peace of Coverleaf Township, I impose a minimum fine of fifty dollars in order. Well, quite a bit of last-minute strategy. It didn't work out so well. Lum may be in bad with Evelina now, but the Hippodrome is out of the way. to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. The original malted milk. Do you ever wonder what I mean when I say that? Simply this, the successful combining of rich, full cream milk, wheat, and finest malted barley was first discovered by Mr. William Horlick over 50 years ago. It was the first time in history that whole milk had been successfully reduced to powder form in combination with extracts of the malted grains. His discovery proved to be one of the most important and far-reaching in the history of medical dietetics. Ever since, Horlicks has been used and recommended by physicians the world over for a wide variety of dietary uses. And ever since, Horlicks has been known as the original malted milk. Look for this mark when next you are buying malted milk. It readily distinguishes Horlicks from the many cheap imitations now on the market. It is your guarantee of quality and results, and your safeguard against inferior products. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, last Friday, Squire Skimp was tried in Lum's Justice of the Peace Court for operating a theater in violation of a city ordinance in Pine Ridge, and Lum ordered his place closed and assessed a fine of fifty dollars. Now, as the Pine Ridge Planetarium is the only theater in town, the old fellows are doing a big business. As we look in on our old friends today, we find Lum and Cedric Weehunt in the box office of the theater just before the evening performance. Abner is just entering. Listen. Why ain't you in there taking up tickets, Abner? Well, Elizabeth's taking them up for me. She likes to sit there and speak to everybody when they come in anyway. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're going to have a full house again tonight. Yeah, well, yeah, might now all the seats are took now. <laughs> expect you better get on up there in the booth, Cedric. Be time to start here directly. Yes, Mom. Uh, ain't supposed to start till 7.30, though, but you can run some of them slides so to keep the audience from getting the impatience. You want me to run that slide telling the women to take off their hats? Yeah, better run that and run that about no whistling or stomping your feet or loud talking aloud. And, Cedric, uh, tell Grandpa to come here a minute, too. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, uh... Well, there comes Jim Higgins and his family. First time I saw him out to the show. 
Yeah, well, River's been out there. Don't have to make a good call. Howdy, Jim. Good evening, Miss Higgins. Yeah, how are you, Long? Oh, first rate. How's yourself? Uh, a whole lot of lessons. Fine-looking bunch of children you got there, Jim. <laughs> Must take after the mama. Yeah, so <laughs> how much are you going to cost to get in here, Long? Oh, uh, Agos is uh, 25 cents apiece. That'll be half a dollar for you and your woman. And, and we'll run all the youngins through at 10 cents a head. That'll be a dollar and 10 cents. Just give me a dollar and we'll call it even. Well, I, I better tell Elizabeth to let them all in, Long. Well, I'll give them all tickets, Abby. Oh, oh. Yeah, hey Jim. Much obliged. Hope you enjoy the show. <laughs> I thought he cost him something. He brings that bunch of hair to the show, don't he? Uh, did you send for me, Ron? Uh, oh, yeah, Grandpa. I just wanted to tell you to start playing that piano in there. Entertain the folks till the picture starts. I've been playing it for the last half hour. Well, I couldn't hear you out here. I just told you you hadn't started yet. Oh, yeah, he's been playing. I could have told you that, Mom. I don't know that's what you wanted with him. <laughs> Yeah, I'll play that Gordy Nelly again, Grandpa. That's my favorite. Yeah, go ahead, Grandpa. That's all I want. Yeah, all right, Mom. Hey, hey, how about getting some tickets here? Well, hello, Dick. Hey, howdy, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of show is this you got tonight, fellas? Why, it's an uncommonly good one, I reckon, Dick. It's come high recommended. Yeah, well, give me three. The wife and Arthur went on in. Here, now, no, no, no. Just cut that out now. We don't want to charge you nothing, Dick. Just put that money right back in your pocket. Come back here. No, no, you're not going to do that, Mom. I'll see you after the show. Oh, for goodness sake. There's a fine fellow, you know. It hadn't been for him, we wouldn't have been doing all this business. Oh. Well, we're going to have to get some more seats for this place, too, Ron. There's an awful lot of folks had to stand up Saturday night. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can rent some more of them chairs in the county seat. Yeah, I might could get them from a lodge hall now that Squire's closed up and ain't used them. Yeah, I don't know. Squire leased them for three months, you know, and Mose Moose says they're going to make him pay the rent on the hall over there whether he uses a show or not. Well, he ain't going to have no show in there, I can tell him that right now. That place is closed up for good. We have to rent them from Squire, though. As mad as he is at us, he more than likely want to charge us two or three classes for him. Yeah, I doubt he'd let us have a call, even. Wait a minute. Hello? Pine Ridge Planetarium, and I'm at his talking. Oh, uh, the 40s of 1934. Yes, Ma. Oh, my, it's supposed to be uncommonly good. No, starts at 7.30 sharp. Yeah, I think you can make it all right. It's, uh, let's see, it's 25 after now, according to my time. All right, Miss Keller. I'll have Cedric hold the show up so you can get here. Yeah, howdy, George. Right. Mama be through there in a minute. Not at all, not at all. Goodbye. Now, yeah. hello there, George. Oh, too long. All right, sir. Make your eyes to you. Hope you enjoy the show. Well, there's a fellow Lama knows everybody in town. Can't raise money to pay his debts, but he's all going to go to any kind of a show comes to town. Yeah, he owes us a bill down there. It's a store we never will crack. Yeah, like them two little girls of Homer Rankins. Come in the show there a while ago, and that family has been on a relief all winter, come on, now. Well, they never paid nothing, though, Anna. Huh? They never paid nothing. I've seen them standing out there in front looking at the posters, and I just give them them tickets. <laughs> More likely the first time they've ever had a chance to see a show. I telephoned the sea skunks that lives next door to them and had every go and tell her mama where they're at. Yeah, well, I was going to say it. How many, please? Huh? Oh, howdy, Snake. What, uh, what does it cost to get in this joint? Why, 25 cents for eight hours. That's what you wear. Well, oh, what'd you call me? Uh, nothing. Uh, admission is a quarter, Snake. Well, that's 25, 20 cents too much anyway. Give me a ticket, though. Yes, sir. There you are. Well, uh, just put it on the books. I ain't got no money with me. I'll pay you later. Well, here, Snake, we ain't got no credit card. Uh, let, uh, let him go, Abner. Huh? Don't want to get no argument with him about it. Oh, he never will pay it, though, huh? Well, I'd rather give him a ticket and have a Lucas over. Well, say so there's a fellow that'll go clean out of his way to do something on that right, Snake Hogan. Yeah. Poor little wife and children he just stayed over at the house by themselves. Yeah. Never thinks about taking him out to nothing. Yeah, sure, I bet that they ain't saw a show in five years. Mm. I don't suppose them children are here that ever saw one. No, more like they're not. More than like that. You know, I wouldn't mind to let them in for nothing, am I? Wish we could get the business built up to where we were making enough money to just let six folks out in free for nothing. Just let all the children in town in for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be a fine thing? Yeah, I'd love to do that. Of course, a uh, place would be jammed with them every night all along. Yeah, and I don't believe we'd lose a thing by it, am I? Children's folks would have to come along with them. They'd buy tickets, of course. 
I believe we'd have business to where we'd make money. Oh, my goodness. Look, Tommy, on here, Lum. Look there. Where? Who? Why, him. Get down here to where he can't see you. Oh, get up from there, Abner. He ain't going to bother us. Now, now, I ain't going to give him no chance. He's four, he's going to get even with us for closing his place up. Well, he can't hurt us unless on the inside of the box office here. Well, he can shoot through it, can he? Oh, he ain't going to do that. Might start arguing or something, but that's about all. Just let me handle it. Well, howdy, Squire. Well, good evening, man. Good evening. How's business? Why, pretty good, Squire. The house is nearly full tonight. Well, yeah, this looks like it might be a pretty good picture you got here tonight. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be uncommonly good. Yes, well, you men ought to do a nice business here now. It's my place. It's closed up over there. Yeah, I sort of hate that, Squire. I don't feel just right about that. Well, I don't blame you, Lum. There wasn't anything else that you could do. It was a law, and it was up to you as Justice of the Peace to enforce it. Well, I'm proud you feel that way about it, Squire. Oh, yes, yes. There's no hard feelings, Lum, not at all. I was a little mad at first, of course, but <laughs> after I got to thinking it over, well, I realized that that place over there mine was a fire hazard. And before I'd risk the lives of my friends and neighbors here in Pine Ridge, I'd rather the place be closed. Well, that's mighty nice of you to look at it that way, Squire. I want to shake your hand. <laughs> well, all right, Long. Yeah. Well, just let bygones be bygones. Yeah, sure. Uh, better give me a ticket. I think I'll go in and see the show tonight. No, here, here now, Squire. Here's a ticket, but I don't want no money. No, so you just feel free to walk right in this show any time you want to. Don't cost you a cent. Glad to have you. No, no, I don't want to do that at all now, Lum. I'd rather pay him away. No. Well, we don't want to charge you nothing. No, no, I now. wouldn't think I would appreciate it, Lum, but I want to pay him away just like anybody else. Well, I'll see you later, man. All right, Squire. Well, I'll find two good ones. Well, sir, did you ever have such a surprise in your life? <laughs> Hey, Granny, you ain't such a bad sort of fella after all, is Well, I don't know, Lum. I just can't trust that fella. When he gets to talking too nice that way, well, that's when I get scared of him. Oh, shucks. Sassy fresh. Sassy fresh. Well, I do. He just got off and got to thinking the whole thing over and seeing where we was right. And he was man enough to come down and admit to it. I admire him for it. Yeah, but now when he gets to pat me on the back that way, why, well, he's more like just looking for a good place to stick a knife in there. Oh, trouble with you, Abner. You hold a grudge too long. Squire's trying to do the right thing. You've got to learn to trust your fellow man, Abner. Well, I hope I'm wrong, but I hey, still don't feel... Abner, Lum! Huh? Come here, quick. Somebody's hurt. They've been at you. Oh, my goodness, Lum. What's oh. the matter, Grandpap? Who is it? Get out of my way, Abner. Yeah, who is it, Grandpap? Oh, my goodness. Look down there, Lum. Look down there, back there, everybody. Get in the way. Yeah, who is it? Who is it? Turn on the light, Cedric. Here, let me through here. Yeah, turn on the light, Cedric. Get out of my way. Cedric. Who is it? Who is it? Get back, everybody. Quit shoving. Oh, I'm down to the center, Lum. Get far seat. Here, squire. Squire. Are you hurt? Squire. And something like this would have to happen, just as Squire had apparently reformed. down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlick, the original malted milk. Medical and dental authorities tell us that bad teeth are often a source of many diseases and infections common to the human body. So it's essential that you care well for your youngster's teeth from the very start. First, take them to the dentist regularly and follow his advice. Second, Include in their diet plenty of the minerals and vitamins essential for proper tooth and bone development. Such vitamins and minerals are found in Horlick's malted milk. You have your own dentist. 
The Horlicks malted milk you can get at your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. Half the children, which they'd prefer. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Last night, Squire Skimp attended Lum and Abner's picture show, the Pine Ridge Planetarium, for the first time. And while walking down one of the aisles, stumbled and hit his head against one of the seats, knocking himself unconscious. The old fellows are very much concerned over Squire's misfortune. And as we look in on the jot down store today, we find Lum and Abner discussing the accident. Listen. Well, I wouldn't worry so much about it, Lum. Well, I just hate for anything like that to happen there in our show, Abner. Special after Squire was nice enough to come over and tell us he never had no hard feelings at us over us closing up his picture show. Uh, you think this is going to make him mad at us again now, huh? No, but I just hate it because it had to be him, of all people, to get hurt over there. Yeah. We've caused him enough trouble about something like that to happen, closing him up and all. So, well, I still can't see how it's going to fall. Well, he said it was so dark in there he couldn't have see. You know, coming in out of the daylight that way, I think he must have tripped himself on one of them seats. Yeah, yeah, well, now he might have. I don't know. It's awful dark in there, I'll say that. Oh, yeah. I know Saturday night, the weather Abernathy sat right smack dab in Grandpa Meeks' lap there. And it's just a wonder Grandpa never got hurt right then, too. Yeah, I wish there was some way we could have some lights in there, but the trouble is you can't do it for it'll style the picture. Yeah. Well, of course, it's all right if you sit in there a while. You get to where you can see all right. It's just sort of when you first come in there, it bothers you. Yeah. Picture shows ought to have two rooms, you know. Two rooms? Yeah, one of them where you can sit down and sort of get used to the dark before you go in to watch the picture. Oh. That would have stopped all that stumbling around. Well, oh, uh, no, but... If it was dark in the first room, why, they'd stumble in there, too. I don't well, know. just let it go. I ain't going to put in there, no way. Yeah. Of course, uh, might have another room for them to sit down in before they go in. No, no, that wouldn't help them. Oh, of course not. I'd get so many rooms that way, but he'd have to start going to show about a day ahead of time so he could set in all the different rooms before he got the room where the picture is. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute, Terrell. <laughs> We're crazy. Huh? <laughs> Why, them first rooms don't have to be dark. We can have the lights on in there. It won't need but one room that way. Have the lights on? Why, sure. It don't have to be dark only in the room where we're showing the moving picture. Well, what good would it do to set in a room with the lights on first? Why, to get their eyes used to the dark so when they go... Uh, uh, and, uh, no. For no. goodness sake. It's too late now anyway. I mean, Squire's done hurt. Ain't no use to lock the barn door after the horse is stole. Uh-huh. Nothing, nothing. I'm sorry I said it. I ought to had better sense. Who, who, whose horse is stolen? Nobody's. I just said that. I... Well, now, Lum, if somebody's horse has been stolen around here, I ought to know about it. I'm the constable. And For up goodness to me sake, there ain't been no horse stolen, Abner. I just said there ain't no use to lock the barn door after the horse is stolen. Well, how could they lock the door after he's stolen if he ain't been stolen? Mm. You're just trying to protect somebody. I know, Lum. You just let that slip. That's just about what you done. Abner, if somebody's horse was stolen, I'd tell you about it. I'd just use oh, that old Oh, no, expert. you don't now. Just because it's some friend of yours. It huh? ain't no friend of mine. Well, what you trying to protect him for? I ain't trying to protect nobody. Well, who is it then? Nobody. Well, um, it's bound to be somebody. A horse can't steal itself. There ain't been no horse stole, I told you. You said there was a minute ago. Now you're trying to back out of it. I ain't trying to back out. Just hush up about it. I've said all I'm going to. Oh, refuse to answer questions, huh? Did you know, Lom, I could take you right down there and lock you up in jail? Lock me? You ain't accusing me of stealing no horse, are you? Well, you might not have shown up stolen, but you're just as guilty as the fella that did. Harboring a criminal, that's what you're doing. Interference with the law. That makes you a party to the crime. Oh, for goodness sake, Sam. You drive a fellow subtracted. Oh, for yeah. <laughs> I'm giving you the third degree. That's what's making you feel that way. <laughs> I'm breaking you down. I'm going to break you down, Rick, and it ain't going to be by asking a bunch of questions, neither. Where was you at on an, uh, who was it? What, was it some of your relations? No. Uh, vegetable or, man, uh, I mean, uh, was it Evelina's brother? No, Abner, no, it weren't nobody. Uh, 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 tell me what I'm getting warned. I'm not going to tell you nothing. As far as I know, there ain't been no horse stole in the first place, and if there was, I don't know who done it. Yeah, uh, it's just a trouble around here, too. 
They always criticize the constable for not looking after the duties of his office. And then when something happens, why, everybody's afraid to tell him anything about it. They all kind of help me. I believe you'll get worse every day of the world. I'll find out. But it's your own fault, Rob. You won't tell me nothing. How you expect me to catch him if you won't answer I me? don't want you to catch nobody. Yeah. Here's what I figured. Yeah, I'm more likely somebody that's a good And you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Sitting over here arguing about something that don't mount to a hill of beans and there's Squire laying over at his place just hovering, which life and death, you might say, over falling down in our picture show. Yeah. You ought to be ashamed. All right. All right, Bob. I won't say no more about it. But I just warn you, if whoever it was stole that horse, is a private friend of yours, and you don't want to see him get in no trouble, if you'll see him and tell him to take the horse back to whoever it belonged to, why, I won't say another word about it. Just to help you. All right, Evan. Thank you. Yeah, all right. I'll see that the horse is took back. Now, that settles it, don't you? Yeah, yeah. All right. I don't feel just right about it, though. I feel sort of guilty myself getting mixed up in it this way. Special after all I've said about crime, not tan. Well, you just forget about it now. Don't say another word about it. It just... One little thing that said sort of worrying me about it. Well, ain't no use to worry about it now. I told you I'd handle it. Yeah, but it's going to be harder to get that horse back in there than you think so long. I don't think we'll have no trouble. Just pre- just leave it to me. Well, I just hope that you ain't forgot nothing. Forgot nothing? Yeah. Didn't you say a while ago that the door was locked after the horse was stole? I was just thinking you might have trouble getting it back in there if that door's locked. Well, if it's locked, I'll get a key somewhere. Now, please, Abner, please don't say another word about it. Oh, I won't. I won't. I won't tell a soul. Well, I'm don't. glad that's over. I'll know better than to start something like that again. Yeah, yeah, it ought to be a lesson to you, Lonnie. Go ahead, getting yourself in such scrapes as that. If you ever hear me using another one of them old lettered sayings again in front of you, I want you to walk me one. Uh, I, I believe that was our ring. Yeah, just sit down. I'll get it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It might be that fella. You better talk to him. What fella? You know, the horse thief. Oh, uh, hello? This is Lum Edders talking. Oh, well, yeah. hello, Doc. Yeah. Uh, Doc who, Lum? Doc Miller, shut up. Doc, well, I'll be dead, but... Uh-huh, yeah. He'd have been the last fellow in town I'd ever speak to. Well, I declare. Well, that's too bad. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I bet they don't catch it. Well, I sure hate to hear that, Doc. He's got an automobile. I don't know what he'd want to steal. Still unconscious part of the time, huh? Doc Miller, of all people, him and his fancy pills uh-huh. and subscriptions. Well, you reckon we ought to take him into the hospital and have him raid? No, raid. One of them Kodaks that takes pictures plumb through you. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, x-ray. What's the reason he don't? Well, if he don't want to go, of course, it can't force him. Well, I wouldn't let a horse tell me what he's doing, what he wouldn't. Well, let us know, Doc, if there's any new development. You, you don't think there's no bones broke, huh? Uh-huh. Well, me and Admiral will go over there to see him in a few minutes and sort of cheer him up. <laughs> well, now, how do you go about cheering a horse? Oh, you don't? <laughs> I ain't going. Uh, well, let us know when it's all right for him to have visitors in. All right, Doc. All right, much obliged for calling. Goodbye. Hi. Oh, <laughs> goodbye. Then his doc says Squire must be in pretty bad shape. Squire? Yeah, says he's examined him good and can't find nothing wrong with him. He don't think there's no bones broke, but Squire lays there and moans and takes on something wonderful, he says. Well, I do know. Well, he ought to be took in there at the hospital and at the county seat and let them examine him, but doc says he just comes right out flat put it and refuses to be moved. Yeah. Well, sir, it, it don't look like he could have hurt himself that bad, does it, just falling there in the aisle that way? Well, it's more than likely a concussion of the brains or something like that. Mm-hmm. Must have sort of knocked his head again something when he fell. Yeah, more than likely. I feel bad about it, too, you know what? Maybe we ought to write Squire a little note of some kind and tell him how sorrowful we are. Yeah, yeah. Doc Miller says he'd rather he wouldn't have no company for a few days. Yeah, well, sure, we could just write him a note and tell him that we're sorry it happened, all that, you know. Well, that'll, that'll let him know we're concerned about him. Sure. Thinking sure. of him. Yeah, yeah. Hand me that pencil there. I'll oh. just grab him a few on the other hand. He's subject to take it over to him as quick as he gets back. No, I expect we better use a pen and ink, Abner. Come think about a letter like this. Uh-huh. I have. 
Hell. Dear Squire. Dear Squire. Oh, uh, hello, Squire. Huh? Nothing. He ain't out there. Huh? Trying to figure out how to start this. Huh? Yeah, well, I wouldn't say dear that way, Lon. That sounds like a love letter or something like that. I wouldn't call him dear Squire. We are awful sorry you got hurt when you fell down in our picture show last night. Well, I wouldn't say fell down in our picture show. I'd say on it, you know. That, that sounds like falling down the well or something. Be quiet, I'm not What's that you little tag just now? We feel bad about it because we know it's our fault for not having more light in there so you could see where you was going. Yeah, yeah, so I thought all right. Mm. Anything we can do for you, be sure and let us know. For we feel responsible for the whole business. Yeah, yeah. Yours truly. Now we both better sign this hat. Yeah, sure, yeah. Oh, we imagine the squire will be very glad to receive this little note from Lemon Abner. Don't you? to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Besides insisting on Horlicks at the drug counter, many people are now asking for Horlicks at the soda fountain. They prefer the special Horlicks flavor and famous Horlicks quality. That's why so many of the better and smarter druggists today have decided to serve Horlicks as a regular feature. They have found that Horlicks makes for more satisfied customers. Look for the Horlick name at the next fountain at which you stop. If you don't see it, tell the clerk to get it for you next time. It will cost you no more. And the fountain owner will pay only a small fraction of a cent more for each drink to serve the best Horlick, the original malted milk. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, it appears that the accident Squire Skimp suffered at the Pine Ridge Planetarium Monday night was more serious than first thought. Even though Dr. Miller's examination failed to reveal anything gravely wrong, Squire is still confined to his bed and reported to be suffering great pain. Lum and Abner are very much concerned over the accident. And as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Grandpappy Spears down at the Jot'em Down store discussing it. Listen. Oh, yeah, it's too bad it had to happen, especially to Squire. And I still don't see how he could got that bad hurt just falling there in the aisle that way. Well, I was talking to Dr. Miller this morning about that. He says in all his years of practice, that's one of the strangest cases he's ever handled. Well. Says he examined Squire and looked him over good and he can't find a thing in the world wrong with him. But Squire says he's hurt his spinal column or something like that. Doc says there ain't no way hardly to tell about such as that for sure. Uh-huh. Ain't no telling just how much Squire has suffered with that. He told Doc he, he wouldn't go through all that suffering and misery again for a thousand dollars. Me and Abner both just hate it the worst way. Why, of course you do. Of course. I reckon some of us ought to go over there and check with him, sort of cheer him up all we can. I ain't got no use for him, but at a time like this, a body ought to hold no grudges. Well, Doc said just uh, it'd be a heap better if he never had no company or blisters till he gets the feeling a little better. Uh-huh. Me and Abner sent a letter over to him yesterday to sort of cheer him up. And that was right thought of you, Lom. Yeah, we told him we were sorry for the accident happened in our picture show, and we know it was our fault for not having better lights over there to where everybody could see where he was going. Yeah, it is awful dark in there. I noticed that myself. Well, you've got to have a dark in a picture show. We told him not to hesitate about calling on us if there's anything we could do to help him. We felt uh, responsible for the whole thing. And I know he appreciated that. Oh, he did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cedric's taking the note over for us. And 
He said he never seen a fellow peering up like he did when he read it. Said he sat right straight up in bed and all while he was reading it. Well. And uh, again, he got done reading it. He folded it up right careful and put it under his pillow. <laughs> said that was something he wanted to keep. <laughs> now, ain't that the nicest thing you ever heard of? And here it ain't been a week ago he was so mad at us for closing up this picture show here that he threatened to get revenge on us. Said he'd get even with us if it was the last thing he ever done. Well, I better say things that way when he's mad. He don't half mean. Oh, yeah. Tell you the truth, I believe Squire sort of had a change of heart anyway here late. Sort of reformed himself. Well, maybe he thinks he ain't going to get well. Maybe that's the reason he's been tonight. Well, it might be, of course. I know a body will get to thinking over his wrongdoings and shortcomings again he gets down the chatters that way. Oh, yes. I know here a while back when I was down with the fever there, sort of on a funeral list, you might say, I thought I'd have gone ashore. Everybody would come over to see me when they went to leave. I could tell by the way they'd shaken my hands that I thought I'd never pull through. Well, you was awful low there for a while, Grandpa. Yeah, must have been for... I recollect as the chief don't come over to see me and sit there and look me up and down and ask me how tall I was. I know Judge Ken, he's just trying to find out what size casket to make for me. Well, some said as he done had it made for you. Why, he did, yeah. His youngins has got it down there on the mill pond now, using it for a boat. Well, I was on easy about you myself, Granddad. I done give you up. Oh, I done give myself up first, that goes. Preacher come over there to see me the day I so low, and I don't know how come able to do it, but I promised him a big donate if I got well. Then Dad blamed for didn't do it. And he liked to hounded me to death for it. Finally, I had to just tell him I must have been delirious when I said it, sort of talking out of my head. Never knowed what I was saying. Well, you ought to did that, Grandpa. I know it. I know it. I don't know how come it ever makes such a promise. Well, what I mean... Oh, wait a minute. There's Cedric now. Huh? Oh. So on that boy. <laughs> Left over two hours ago to take a spool of thread over to Sister Simpson's, and it's just now getting back. Man, it oughtn't to take him that long to go just over there and back. Why, no. Oughtn't to take him over five minutes. I don't know where he spends his time. But you got to worry him or Abner ain't neither one here in the afternoons, and I've got to stay here by myself and run the store. Working my fingers to the bone trying to make a living for us. Of course, it's sort of quiet this afternoon, but yesterday I had a big rash. There was two customers in here at once. Me trying to wait on everybody but myself. Hi, this Cedric. <laughs> That's the funniest picture I've ever seen in my life. Are you laughing at me and Grandpa sitting here? Oh, no, Mom. I mean, that picture we've got over to the show for tonight. I just got through looking at it. You mean you went over and run that moving picture just for yourself and burn up all that electricity? Well, Mr. Abner told me to. He was over there. I see. So that's where you've been all this time. What about his Abner? Well, he was coming. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yonder he comes. He, he stopped to talk to Moe's Moots a minute. Well, uh, there's an order sitting over there on the counter, Cedric. was called in here about an hour ago. You better get it and take it on over there. Yes, Moe. And don't be gone all day, neither. No, I'll be right back. One, two, goodness. If that boy ain't a caution. <laughs> over there running that picture just for him and Abner. I'll grant it tomorrow afternoon. I'm going over there with them. Yeah, glad to find out about that myself. Wait a minute. Did I tell Cedric where to take that order of groceries to? Yeah, I don't believe you did, Mom. No, sir, I sure never. Now, where does he think he's going? Running out of here and he don't even know where he's running to. Hey, you must have scared him, jumping on him about running that picture. Oh, so. howdy, man, howdy. Uh, howdy, Abner. Where have you been all afternoon? Well, I've been, uh, huh? You heard what I said. Yeah, I must stop. Well, where have you been? Well, wait a minute first. Uh, ha has Cedric been telling you a bunch of stuff, I think, so? Hey, Mr. Long, Mr. Long, who is that uh, order supposed to go to again? Why, Mrs., uh, Mrs. Phillips, Luther Phillips, woman. Oh, yeah, I recollect now. <laughs> I thought that you'd be dead. Oh, son, that Cedric can't recollect nothing. Now, Abner, don't you and Cedric be going over and running them pictures in the afternoon that way. I know about it. You're burning up a lot of electricity for nothing. 
Can you wait till night to see it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we ain't going to run it no more today. Yeah, no good and well you ain't. Oh, me. <laughs> After I've just left till my side is hurting. <laughs> now you ought to see that picture. It's about a fella that... Well, don't be telling me about it. I'll see it tonight. Well, if it's a gooder, and I'll tell you that. Go tell people that have to come to the show. Don't be coming over here and telling me. I'll be there anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's right, ain't it? Abner, did you hear anything from Squire Skimp? Hear anything from him? Yeah, did you hear how he's getting along today? Oh, uh, no, I ain't, Grandpa. Uh, he was awful sick yesterday, though. I know that. We heard from Doc Miller yesterday. He said he was just awful sick man. Yeah, I heard he was unconscientious, sir. Uh, that's what Doc said. Said he knowed things at uh, part of the time, and then part of the time he never knowed nothing. Sort of out of his head, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, poor Squire. I feel awful sorry for fine, too. Yeah. Fine fellow, Squire. Yeah, I wish there was something we could do for him. I feel bad about that. Well, we wrote him that note yesterday. Tell him how sorrowful we felt about it. Subject said that pit and not born anything. Yeah, well, I must tell me about that, Abner. That's mighty nice of you. Well, I'm yeah. glad we wrote it now. I sure am. Well, yeah, we ought to get in touch with him. Why don't you call up over there, Abner, and see if he's feeling like having visitors? If he is, as soon as Cedric gets back, why, we can all go over there and sort of cheer him up a little. Yeah, yeah, I could be. Yeah, go ahead and call him, Abner. Now, let's see. His rang is, uh... uh two shorts and long. Yeah, 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 that's right. Two shorts and long. Now, if Miss Skimp acts like she'd rather he didn't have no company to Abner, tell her we'll be over tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, hello? Uh, this Skimp this way? Yeah, I know what he is up there, then. Uh, Miss Skimp, this is Abner Peabody talking. Yes, Mom. Well, I'm totally well. How are you? Er, uh, hi, Squire. Oh, he is. Well, good. <laughs> good what? Uh, he says he's feeling a lot better today. Oh, well, tell her we'll be over to see him then. Well, uh, Miss Skimp, uh, me and Mom and Grandpa will be over directly to see him and sort of cheer him up, visit with him a while. <laughs> yeah. Huh? All right, Mom? Oh, he ain't. Ain't what? Well, uh, whereabouts is he at? Huh? He must not be there. Well, I do know. Well, he must be feeling better then. Huh? I said he went into the county seat today on business, Mom. Well, well, I reckon he went in to see the doctor there to have himself x-rated then. Doc Miller says that's the only way in the world he'll ever tell how bad he's hurt. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, wait a minute, man. Uh, did he go in there to see a doctor, Mr. Skimp, to have himself examined? Of course he did. Oh. Well, I'm glad he's able to be up and around again. <laughs> Mighty <laughs> proud to hear him. He's getting better, that's why. <laughs> yes, Mom. All right, Mr. Skimp. Thank you, Mom. Goodbye. <laughs> Is he having himself examined? I, I don't know, Mom. She said he went in town there to see a lawyer. A lawyer? Yeah. Oh, for goodness sake. A <laughs> lawyer can't tell him nothing about how bad he's hurt or nothing. <laughs> oh, well, I, I think he just went in to see a lawyer on business, though. On business? Yeah. No, I don't know. Reckon what kind of trouble he's got himself into now. Must be terribly important for him to get up out of a sick bed to go see a lawyer. Yes, and it's our guess that the old fellows will soon find out what this urgent business is. Take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Let's stop for a minute and take stock of ourselves. How do you feel this evening? Full of energy or tired and drowsy? If you're feeling all in, don't blame it all on your work. Think back. How well did you sleep last night? Not so good? Well, that might be your trouble right there. You're not getting the sleep you need. I suggest you'd better follow this plan. Drink a glass full of Horlicks tonight, just before going to bed. Don't eat a thing. The Horlicks will satisfy you. In addition, it will relax and refresh you. 
help you to get to sleep easily and naturally. You sleep more soundly, too. Horlicks digests quickly and thoroughly and doesn't interfere with your rest as heavy food often does. Give this plan a trial and see if you don't feel better tomorrow. You can get a package of Horlicks, you know, from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. Now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. For the past few days, Lama and Abner have been very much concerned over the accidents Fire Skimp had while attending their picture show, the Pine Ridge Planetarium. However, they learned yesterday that Squire recovered sufficiently to make a business trip into the county seat. So evidently, his injuries are not as serious as was first thought. As we look in on our old friends today, we find a very heated game of checkers in progress at the Jotham Down store. Listen. All right, let's see now. I believe I move like that. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute now. I never take my finger off of it. I never done it. I don't get out like to run myself in. <laughs> I'd give you three men there if I'd move. <laughs> yes, sir, you the sure I've got a king out of there. <laughs> and let's me see here now. If I move like that, then you'd have to... No, no, oh no, you don't, no, you don't. <laughs> I've just seen that in time, too. <laughs> That's sure. Uh, yeah, you just might not have got me blocked here. Yeah. Let's see. Ought to be somewhere here. Yeah. Why, yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> What's the matter with me? <laughs> Had to jump all the time and never even seen it. What do you think you're doing? Uh, 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 huh? What are you doing sitting here talking to yourself about oh. it? I'll sit there and watch you for three minutes. I just uh, playing you a game of checkers, Mom. <laughs> you weren't here, so I was playing for both of us. Yeah, I just put that checkerboard up. I told you I didn't want you playing checkers by yourself that way. Mm. Somebody come in here and hear you talking to yourself that way, they'll think you've lost your reason. Well, uh, ain't nobody here to play with. Well, why don't you straighten up the store? Look at that counter over there. All that ginghams and for cows still scattered out there where you're showing Sister Simpson them dress patterns right early this morning. Why don't you roll them bolts up and put them back in the shell? Yeah, and then have to drag them all down again. Drag them down again? Yeah, she's taking a bunch of samples and said she'd make up her mind which piece she wanted and then come back the first of next week. I just made up my mind I'd learn her lesson. Just leave the whole work playing right where it's at. You, you're going to learn her lesson by leaving all the bull goods we got in the store there on the counter for a week, huh? Yes, sir. Just learn her not to make a fella pull down every bowl of goods in the house. I'm just like Levi Whitten. When folks does something that you don't like, I learn them a lesson. Levi Whitten. I don't know which one's yours, him or you. Or uh, both of you. Now, Levi's got a whole lot more sense than lots of folks give them credit for having. Well, maybe he ain't much of like that. I know one thing, he sure got even with that bus line that runs through here for running over one of his holes. Taking him six months to study out a way to do it, but he sure got even with them. Yeah, I thought Levi was over in Oklahoma and visiting. He yeah, is. That's the way he's getting even with them. When he left here, he bought a round trip ticket on that bus line and he ain't coming back on the bus. <laughs> he ain't coming back on the bus? No, sir. He's going to walk every step of the way back just for five. <laughs> Yeah, Levi's always getting even with somebody to hear his tell of it. Well, he does, too. I don't know how he studied up in town. Well, now, don't you start patterning yourself after Levi. Wanting him in a town this size is enough. Too many, in fact, is. Well, I just wish I knowed as much about government and how it ought to be run if he does. There's a fella that's made a study of government problem. Well, you better find out how the store ought to be run, what you better be running. Come on, let's get this stuff put back in the chair. Yeah, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. There comes Cedric now, Lom. We can just get him to do it. Oh, yeah. Where is he been? Oh, he's taking a little batch of groceries over to every sea sponsor. Are there any more orders to deliver now? No, no, that's everything, I reckon. Well, I seen Mr. Squire out walking just now. Well, whereabouts was he at, Cedric? Uh, he was down there by Mose Moochie's Barbershop just a while ago. Well? Yeah, I seen him a few minutes ago myself. Well, I never knowed he was up and around. Well, he went to the county seat yesterday, you know that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Mr. Cedric, uh, straighten up all that bolt goods that's laying on the counter there and put it back up in the shelf nice. Yeah. Oh, shucks. I was hoping there weren't nothing for me to do so as I could lay down back there in the feed room and sleep for a little while. Sleep? Why don't you do your sleeping at night? Well, I generally always do, but last night I didn't. 
It's got to where every night when I go home from the picture show, I've got to pound on the door there for an hour before my folks gets up to let me in. So last night I just made up my mind I was just going to knock just one time. And they didn't come to the door to let me in, so I just stood there on the porch all night long. <laughs> well, what in the world did you do that for, Cedric? Well, I was getting tired of them making me wait every night, so I decided just to let them wait once and see how they liked it. Well, I don't blame me neither, Cedric. And tired out from a day's work, why, you got to get some sleep. <laughs> hey, you got even with your folks about like Levi Whitten there, Cedric. Yes, Mama. I can show. Well, now, get that boat good straightened up right now, Cedric, and you'll have plenty of time to get some sleep before the show starts tonight. Yeah, we don't want you going to sleep running them pictures. No, Mama, I won't. <laughs> I just can't wait to see that picture we got for tonight. Yeah, that ought to be a good one, all right. Or to have a big crowd. Oh, yeah. Well, that place has been packed every night since Squire's place has been closed. Yeah. <laughs> we sort of got things to ourselves now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, did you uh, talk to Squire a while ago when you seen him long? No, I started to, but he acted awful strange. Strange? Yeah. You know, I, mean, I don't like to talk to you, but I wouldn't be surprised if that lick he got on his head never affected his memory. Well. I walked right up to him to speak to him, and he just turned and walked off like he never even saw me. Well, I do know. Well, of course, now, Lum, it might be he just worried over that trouble he got himself into. What trouble? Well, I don't know what it is, but, you know, he went into the county seat just afternoon to see a lawyer, so it must be something serious. That's right. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. That's just about what the trouble is. Yeah. It's bound to be something terribly important for him to get up out of a sick bed to go see a lawyer about. Yeah, yeah. I feel awful sorry for him. Especially on him not plumb over that accident that he had in our picture show the other night. Yeah. Just looks like, oh, uh, more trouble the fella had, why, the more he gets. Yeah, them as has gets. Yeah. That's old Leonard Sam. Yeah. I wish there's some way we could help him. Yeah. If he's got to hire a lawyer, I, I might could save him that expense myself, just handle a case for him myself. Not charging nothing for it. Well, now, that'd be a nice thing to do, Mom. That'd show him how sorrowful we are about him, uh, Hurting himself in our picture so about it. Yes, I'm to call him up right now and see if there's any way we can help him in this court trial or whatever it is. Yeah, why don't you do that, Mom? Sure. Let's see, his ring is a long and two short thing. Yeah, that's it. Long and two short. This will show him that we want to be friends with him. Uh-huh. You know, I believe Squire's reformed himself now. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Hello? Squire? <laughs> uh, this is Lum Edwards talking. Yeah. Yeah. Why, uh, Squire, me and Abner heard you was into the county seat yesterday to see a lawyer, so we figured uh, you must be aiming on having some sort of a, a case in court, and I just want to tell you that I'd be glad to donate my service, give you all the legal advice I can, and not charge you a cent for it. No, please. Huh? Well, I didn't mean to be buttoning to your business, but I just picked it. Well, all right, I... Sorry for you feel that way about it. I, I, uh, hello? Hello? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, what's the matter, Lon? What, what did he say? Why, well, he acted like he sort of made him mad. Said for us to attend our own business. Said when he needed any legal advice from me, why, he'd, or he'd call on me first. Well, I do know. Uh, reckon he will. I don't know. I don't much think so. The way he slammed up the wreath, he were my ear. No. Well, I don't know, though, Lama. I do. Well, howdy, Dick. Huh? <laughs> i never seen you coming oh, in. Oh, hello, right? Dick. <laughs> Come on in. Come in. Yeah, I got a registered letter for you, fellas, and I thought I'd better bring it over. It might be something important. You got uh, what kind of a letter, Dick? A registered letter, Lum. You have to sign for it to show it you received it. I brought the book along. You can sign it down. Uh, right there. Uh, Right there. Oh, yeah, sure. I've saw them things before. <laughs> well, I reckon who that could be from. Well, it's more likely from Evelina. I ain't heard from her since she went home. Yeah, well, it's more likely who it's from. <laughs> well, no, it's a uh, postmark in Nina. Addressed to you and Abner both. Well, I reckon what she's writing both of us for. Well, it must not be from her, Abner, if it's from Nina. Oh. It's wrote with a typewriter anyway, see there. Well, open it up. Don't stand there and look at it all day. Uh, just looking at all them stamps on there. Hey, Lenny, that must have cost something to send that thing. Yeah, it must be some valuable papers of some kind, Lon. Valuable papers? Yeah, I think so. Well, good, good. I reckon who could be sending us some valuables that way? 
says up here, return to box 276 in five days. Well, let's see. Today's Thursday. Uh, we'll have to have that back in there by next Tuesday, won't we? I wish they hadn't sent it if we can't keep it. Well, I do know. Clark, Clark, and Clark. Attorneys at law. Oh, yeah, that's that uh, law firm in there at the county seat. Well, <laughs> wanting some legal advice from me, I reckon. <laughs> Lum Edders and Abner Peabody, owners and operators of the Pine Ridge Planetarium. Pine Ridge. Gentlemen. Well, <laughs> that's nice of them to say that. Acting on the instructions of our client, M.K. Skimp, of your city, we are entering suit in Chancery Court against your partnership in the sum of $1,000 for injuries and anguish our client has suffered as a result of an accident sustained in your theater, the Pine Ridge Planet. Well, this more than explains Squire's urgent trip to the county seat yesterday. to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. And, of course, the makers of Horlicks tablets, too. Don't forget that. Horlicks tablets are especially handy in summer. Let me give you one example. Here's a wire from a friend on a motoring trip out west who promised to drop me a line. Reached 2,000 miles today. Still going strong. Tablets swell. Quite a trip by the sound of it. But you don't have to travel 2,000 miles to enjoy Horlicks tablets. They're just as useful on weekend rides. They help keep you refreshed, keep your appetite satisfied if you can't get your meals when you want them. Or if it's golf you prefer or hikes in the woods, you will still find a flask of Horlicks tablets great to have along. Get a 10-cent handy pocket flask from your druggist. He has them also in larger sizes if you wish, in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now... Let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. It's beginning to look as though that little fall Squire Skimp had a few days ago may turn into a serious bump for Lum and Abner. The old fellows received notice from his attorneys yesterday that he was bringing suit for personal injury against the Pine Ridge Planetarium for $1,000 in damages. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner over at the Jotham Down store in a serious discussion with Dick Huddleston. Listen. Well, sir, I still don't see how he could expect to collect no damages from us. We never pushed him down or nothing. Ain't our fault if he's so awkward he can't walk down the aisle over there without falling down. Well, he received those injuries in the theater, though, Lum. That makes you and Abner liable. That's a what day? You're liable. Don't you know nothing about law matters at all? And what day? Well, it just looks to me like he's got a pretty good case against you if he takes it to court. Well, he's going to take it to court, all right. Ain't no doubts about that. That letter we got from them lawyers yesterday said they was bringing suit again. Well, what I mean, though, Lum, if I was you, I'd get hold of the squire and have a talk with him. See if you can't affect the settlement out of court. You mean just pay him something and not take it to court, huh? Well, I don't like to advise you on those things, but that's what I'd do. I believe you'd save money back, because if it goes to court, why, well, you've got the expense of a trial, and you're more likely to lose it anyway. Well, I don't believe he's half as bad hurt as he's letting on like he is in the first place. No. Doc Miller says he's examined him all over, and he can't find a thing wrong with him. Squire claims his final columns is her hurt. Yeah, and that's the trouble, too. I was talking with Doc Miller about that this morning. He says that there's no way to tell about an injury in the back that way. Squire more than likely knew that when he claims that's where he was hurt. You mean Squire knows he's going to get hurt in his back before he fell down? <laughs> yes, Abner, I wouldn't be surprised. Just looked to me like that this whole, he had this whole thing figured out before he came to the show that night. 
Didn't you tell me yesterday, Lum, that you tried to pass him in free that night and he insisted on paying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I told him we never wanted to charge him nothing. Told him he's welcome to come over there any time he wanted to and see the show free. But he laid a quarter down and wouldn't take it back at all, so he paid. Well, you see, he wanted to be sure and pay his way so he could be classed as a paid customer. Yeah. He's got a better case against you that way. Well, I'll be dead blamed. I'm beginning to see through the whole thing now, I believe. Well, I can't see why he'd want to run them chances. Come over there and hit his head against one of them seats and knock yourself unconsciousness just to try to collect a thousand dollars. Well, that's just it, Abner. He might not even hit his head. Might not have been hurt at all. Just uh, letting on like he was. Well, he couldn't have been as bad hurt as he let on, or he couldn't have got up out of bed Wednesday to go into the county seat to see those lawyers. Yeah, that did look strange, didn't it? Yeah, I thought about that. Or... I thought about something that day. It might have been a day before, though. Nothing, nothing. Well, why don't you call him up, Lum? Have a talk with him. See if you can get this thing settled. Might be able to settle with him for just a doctor bill or something like that. Yeah. And if you can, well, I believe you'd be money ahead. Uh, trouble is, I don't know hardly what to say to him. Well, let me talk to him. I'll tell him what I think about it. And I won't beat around the bush about it, neither. No, no. we got to be careful now. Sure don't want to say nothing that's going to make him any matter in the year. Yeah, that just make him that much harder to settle with. I, I'll call him up and see if I can get him to come over here. I see he's short and alone. We can try to reason with him. Yeah, that'd be better if you can get him over here, Lom. Yeah, you stay over here and help us talk to him, Dave. No, no, I, I'd rather not get mixed up in it, Abner. I'd be glad to help you, fella, the all I can, but you better do the talking to him yourself. Hello? Yeah. Kim's his face? Uh, is the squire there, Mrs. Kim? Uh, I asked him to step to the phone, please, Mom. All right, I'll hold it. So that's why he's been acting tonight nice here late. Just a snake in wolf cold, that's who he is. Him and his fancy watch fob. Hello, squire. Why, this here's Lum Edwards. Uh, uh, me and Abner got a letter from them lawyers there in the county seat yesterday, that Clark, Clark, and Clark out there. <laughs> Sound like old Clark, Clark, Clark. Yeah. That's what Cedric is. He's a Clark here in the floor. <laughs> well, if you want our honest opinions, we never like it. And that's what I'm calling you up about. Uh, they said you were suing us for $1,000 for getting hurt over at the picture show. Uh, well, we'd like to talk it over with you. I wonder if you wouldn't like to drop over here for a few minutes. Well, good. Well, we'll be looking for you. All right, Clark. He'd be right over. Well, that's fine. Now, when he gets over there, why, well, tell him that you want to do the right thing about it, and I'd offer to pay him for any loss of time, take care of the doctor bills, and such as that. Yeah, that won't amount to much. See, he weren't in bed more than a couple of days. Well, I don't think Doc Miller ought to charge nothing at all if he never found a thing wrong with him. Well, that ain't Doc's fault. Yeah, I don't know, but if it had been old Doc Rollins over at Cherry Hill, why, well, he'd have found something wrong with him. Why, well, Doc Rollins is a veteran. A horse doctor. I know it. I seen him examine a horse once, and he couldn't find out what was wrong with it, and he give it some medicine to make it half collie. He couldn't find out what was wrong with the horse, so he give him some medicine to make him have the collie. Yeah. Uh, see, he knowed how to cure the collie. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake. Well, that sounds about old Doc, <laughs> Doc Rowland. <laughs> yeah. Now, I wish Doc Miller had to give Squire something like that. Yeah, I do, too. Well, I expect I better be going to the Squire to be here, Jack. Well, uh, Jake, don't stretch off now. No, I've got to go along. Well, we sure thank you for your advice. I don't know what we would do if we never had you to lean again in time of trouble. Oh, well, that's all right, Mom. I'm afraid I'm not much help on this. Well, let me know how you come out with him, though. Oh, yeah, I'll run over to your store that quick as we get through talking with him. Well, good luck to you. Yeah, much obliged. Yeah, so long. I go get that mixed all right, fella, you know. Oh, yeah, he's fine. Yeah. Now, Abner, when Squire gets here, you better let me do the talking. You know how high-strung you are. All those drapping and losing your temper. You say something and then file everything. Yeah, I, I do fly off in the handle terrible, don't I? That's what I say. Yeah, I might forget myself and scare him clean out of here. Just jump on him and beat the everlasting daylight out of him. That's my trouble. I don't know more than strength. I'd hurt him so bad we'd have to pay him $2,000 this time. Maybe three. I don't know. I'd get some dead. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, here he comes. Here he comes. Uh, uh, well, now, don't tell him what, what I said. I might make him mad. I won't. But, you know, if he got mad, he might not want to settle it out of court, don't you see? Yeah, I see. Besides, I'm pretty mad, and a fella say things when he gets mad that way, he don't have me. I, I might not have meant none of it. 
So if I do, I don't believe I'd say nothing to him about it. I told you I wasn't going to say nothing about it. Fact is, I never even paid no attention to what you were saying. Well, good. <laughs> it wouldn't do no good, no. Wait, wait, wait. Hey. Well, howdy, Squire. Hello, Squire, old boy. Come Glad to see you. <laughs> Come on back and sit down. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm gladly getting my strength back on. Uh huh. You're looking fine. Yes, yes. I guess I look a whole lot better than I feel. As an air escape I had there. You'll never know how I suffered. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't go through that again for $10,000. Well, I thought you'd just asking a thousand dollars. Shut up, Admiral. Uh, what was you wanted, Lum? You know, I'm a busy man. My time's valuable. Well, uh, we got that letter from your lawyer, Hitchkey, saying you're suing us for a $1,000, and I just thought we could all three uh, sort of get together and talk it over and settle it out of court, maybe. Yeah. Me and Admiral wants to do the right thing about it. We're just as sorry as we can be that it had to happen. Well, being sorry, Lom, won't mend my shattered nerves, you know. I feel that I've offered a very generous settlement. If you men hadn't been such old friends of mine, I'd never settle for such a paltry sum. Well, Squire, a thousand dollars is a lot of money, especially to me and Abner. We want to do what's right, but we're getting along in years, getting old. It, it'd just be about all we could do to scrape up that much money. And if we did, it'd mean giving up our picture show or our store here one. Uh, you don't want to take the case to court, huh? Well, we figured we could save hiring a lawyer and all that if we could settle with you out of court. Mm -hmm. We're willing to pay your doctor bill and pay for what time you've lost if you figure it's worth anything. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do then. Us being such old friends, I don't want to hold you men up. I've instructed my attorneys to ask for a thousand dollar settlement. But if you men are sincere and want to settle this thing out of court, give me a third interest in your picture show over there and make me manager and we'll just call the whole thing easy. No, no, no. Uh, we no, told you once we didn't want you for a partner in that picture show. Yeah. Yeah, all right, then. We'll take it to court. Well, we'll take it to court, then. I don't believe you can collect no damages. It wasn't our fault you fell down and hurt yourself, no harm. Well, I don't think I'll have any trouble proving that it was your fault. Maybe you've forgotten about that little note that you sent me when I was still in bed over there. Oh, no, I recollect writing a little note telling you we're sorry. Yeah, wait a minute. Let me read you this note and see if it'll refresh your memory. Yeah. Says, Dear Squire. We are awfully sorry you got hurt when you fell down in our picture show last night. We feel bad about it, because we know it's our fault for not having more lights in there so that you could see where you was going. Anything we can do for you, be sure and let us know, for we feel responsible for the whole business. <laughs> and both of you, son. Well, I'll be that glad. Well, it looks like it was no idle threat when Squire swore he'd get even with Lum and Abner for closing up his theater. to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Planning any parties? Try serving cool, refreshing Horlicks malted milk. Here are three very special advantages of Horlicks. The flavor is delicious. It's easy to prepare, and it saves a lot of expense. Old and young like it because of its full, delicious flavor, unlike any other beverage. It's easy to prepare because all you have to do is mix the powder with either water or milk, whichever you prefer, and you're all set. It saves a lot of money, too, because you don't have to serve a big supper when you serve Horlicks. By itself, or with a few simple sandwiches, Horlicks makes a pleasing, satisfying meal. And by the way, you can make up a pitcher full of Horlicks beforehand, if you like, and keep it in the refrigerator. Get a package from your druggist. He has it in both natural and chocolate flavors. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. 
Squire Skimp has threatened to bring suit against Laman Abner for $1,000 for alleged injuries that he received when he fell in their theater last week. Friday, however, he made them a proposition to settle the matter out of court for a third interest in their picture show. The old fellows have promised to give him their decision on the matter today. And as we look in at the Jotham Down store now, we find them explaining the proposition to their friend, Dick Huddleston. Listen. And uh, that was the only kind of a settlement that he was willing to make, huh? Yeah, I told him we'd love to settle it out of court if we could, and he said if we'd give him a third interest in a picture show and make him the manager, why, he'd drop the charges. Oh, well, that's ridiculous. Well, right, uh, he's been trying to get a third interest in that picture show ever since we opened up over there. Yeah, it looks like he's got us to where we can't do nothing else but let him in now. Well, the third interest in the show is worth more than a thousand dollars, isn't it, Lon? Well, it is the way business has been for the last week. Ever since Squire closed up, we've been making some good money out of it. Well, I'd take it to court before I'd settle with him on those kind of things. The trouble is, old Dick, if we take it to court and he wins a judgment again, where are we going to get the thousand dollars to pay him off with? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know, too. We ain't got no thousand dollars. Yeah, but you don't know what he's going to win the case. Just because he's suing you, that don't mean that he's going to collect it. it looks like he's got a pretty good case again, I show. Yeah, that, that note we sent him is about all he'll need to win the case. What's that, Edna? Nothing. Abner, can't you keep nothing to yourself? Well, I never seen no reason not to tell Dick about it. He's trying to help us. Oh, that's all. Right. Well, I ain't trying to keep nothing from you, Dick. I just sort of hate to tell you about it because it, I don't know, it looks so silly. Two old men like us not to have no more sense than to do what we done. What's that, Mom? Well, the other day, next day after Squire fell over there in the show, me and Abner wanted to go over to his house and sort of cheer him up a little, but... Doc Miller said he'd rather he had never had no visitors, so we decided just to write him a note and let him know how sorry we was that it happened. Well, I think that's a very nice thing for you to do. Well, I don't. That note's going to cause us a lot of trouble. Yeah, you see, the trouble is, Dick, we uh, told him in the note that we know it was our fault that he fell. and it Told was... him what? Yeah. Told him we felt responsible for that accident because we never had enough light in there for him to see where he's going. Oh, for goodness sake. What in the world did you ever tell him anything like that for? Yeah, I don't know. Couldn't think of nothing else to say, I reckon. Well, I see now why he was so afraid to take the case to court. Oh, right, sure. He's got the note and he says he aims to use it, too. If they ever read that evidence in court, we won't have a leg to stand on. Huh? Nothing, Abner, nothing. Well, there's a mistake writing a letter like that, Lon. But did you sign it? Yeah, no. me and Abner both did. Played the stand on it. What the world did you see? We about? didn't mean we were showing up to blame over the accident. We were just trying to show Squire that we felt bad about it. Yeah. Just said it was our fault because we never wanted him to think he was too awkward to walk down the aisle where the picture show got falling down. Well, sir, I'm thoroughly convinced now, fellas, that Squire had the whole thing planned before he came over to the show that night. You know, I was right there when he fell. I never could see any scratches or bruises or anything else anywhere. No. Well, Doc uh, Miller examined him good, too, you know, and couldn't find nothing wrong with him. Of course, if he claims there's something wrong with his back, why, it's going to be hard to prove in court that there isn't. That squire's a slick one, all right. Yeah. We might save some expenses by just giving him a third interest in that picture show and settling it out of court. Well, I sure hate the idea of having him in there as a partner. Well, I do too, but he's got that note we wrote admitting it was our fault. Yeah. Ain't no use to tear to court when we know we're going to lose. And if we do lose, where are we going to get the $1,000 to pay him with? I was just thinking, Rum. Squire's been so anxious to get an interest in that picture show, it might be that you could still settle with him by giving him a third interest in the show even if you lose a lawsuit. I believe he'd rather have a third interest in the show than to have a $1,000. And then he's got hadn't thought about that. I believe myself that's all he wants. Well, if you take it to court and lose, well, then you won't be any worse off than you are now. And you stand a chance of winning it. Yeah. The only difference will be whatever lawyer fees amount to, and that won't be much. Well, that settles it then. I grant you we'll take it to court. Take it to the Supreme Court if we have to. Yeah, you, you might get to Hal DeLonge in there to defend you, too. Yeah. Yeah, now, he'd be a good one. He's the best criminal lawyer and baseball empire I've ever seen. Yeah, he ought to know just how to handle this thing. He yes, used to sir. do all right. See, I told Squire we'd let him know what we was going to do about it today, so I just we'll have to call him up now and tell him to go ahead and pop his whip. Yeah, we just will. Huh? Tell him to do what? Pop his whip, I said. Huh? Now, uh, while you're talking to him, you just well tell him to go ahead and sue us too long. Sue us? Yes, sir. Well, that's what I mean, tell him to go ahead and sue us. Oh, <laughs> 
Is that what you call it, popping your whip? Well, yes, you can call it that. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad to find that out. If you'd have come over here and said he's going to pop his whip, <laughs> I wouldn't have known what he's talking about. I just thought he was going to horse whip Wait, wait a minute. There's some Dan Jeff up out there. Better not be talking too much around him. He'll blab it all over town. Well, uh, Lum, I expect I better be getting back over the store. Uh, Dick, wait a minute. I wonder if I couldn't get you to go into the county seat with me this afternoon. Get this fella to belong to to handle his case for us. Well, I don't know, Lum. I guess I could. Well, you could help explain it to him, you know, and we could go in your car, too, I thought. <laughs> well, it's nearly 3 o'clock now. If we're going, we'll better get started. I'll have to go by the store and tell the wife where I'm going, too. Well, I, I'm ready right now. Yeah, me, too. <laughs> I'll uh, telephone up Elizabeth and tell her that I won't be home for supper, not to lay no plate for Well, here, wait a minute, Abner. Both of us can't leave. Huh? Why, somebody's got to stay here and run the store, and you uh, have to stay here and get the picture show started tonight, too. Well, I could be late before we get back. Well, I reckon you fellas can handle it all right, Captain. Huh? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Wait a minute, here's Grand Pat. Better not call Squire while he's here. But we can just stop by his place and tell him. Oh, sure. Now, yeah, come in, Grand Pat. Come in. Hello, Grand Pat. Howdy, Richard. Hello, Ron. Grand Pat, I'll just take you on a game of checker. Ron and Dick's uh, fixing to go to the county seat. Uh, be careful, uh, Ron. Well, uh, going in there. Sit here playing checkers now and forget to start the show on time. No, oh, we'll take care of that now. Don't you worry about it. Well, I'll drop by there when we get back and see how you get along. You ready, Dick? Yeah, yeah, let's get started. I'll uh, see you tonight, then. Uh, uh, careful driving that car now. Don't lock it around something going in there. Dick's a good driver, but he just gets that thing going too fast to suit me. Yeah, yeah, I know he does. Yeah, I just shut my eyes when I get in there. Oh, me, he just hits the high places. Uh, what day are you rushing off to the county seat for, Abner? Well, uh, don't say nothing about it, Grandpa. Uh, it's a secret. But Squire Skinner is popping his whip at us for a thousand dollars. He's doing what? Popping his whip. Oh, son, don't you know nothing? That means that he's a loss on us. That's just a little way of saying it. Oh, well, I, I know about him showing you. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm on that dick's going in there to hire a lawyer to defense us. Well, I don't believe Squire will stand a chance in the world ever getting a judgment again, you have now. I don't believe he is hurt in the first place. And if he was hurt, it weren't you fellas he called, I know. Yeah, I know, but the trouble is he's got that note that me and Lom wrote him, and I'm just afraid that that thing's going to run us. He put that up for evidence again. Uh -huh. What note's that at me? Why, me and Lom wrote him a note when he was laid up in bed there after an accident to tell him it is all our fault. Just uh, trying to cheer him up. Yeah. He had that note over here Friday and said he's going to read it in court. Well, I do know. If the case come up. And if he does, we're going to. Or we just the same as admitted right there that the whole thing was our fault. See, he was just trying to be nice to him. Now, you figure if it wasn't for that note, why, he couldn't collect nothing, huh? Well, that's what Lom says, and he knows all about such as that. Well, he ought to get that note away from him some way or other. It'd be a shame for him to collect all that money off you, and he weren't to blame about it, and he weren't even hurt. No, well, he just fell down on a purpose, Granddad. He had this whole thing figured out in his head before he ever come to the show that night. I wouldn't be surprised. Big Hutterson says so. He's seen through the whole scheme. I said there ought to be some way of getting that note back. Well, I wouldn't hesitate a minute for a note how to go about getting it. Right, right. Yeah, of course it is. So, uh, uh, where about does he keep it at, Abner? Why, he carries it right on him. Keeps it in that big leather folder that he carries all them gold mining stocks and stuff like that he tries to sell in. Uh-huh. Let's see, uh... Come to think about it, the uh, squire's got the name of being a terrible town sleeper, ain't he? Huh? Wait a minute. I believe I know what you're driving at, Grandpa. A fella could sleep in his house over there late of the night. Yeah, I did. I tried it. Get that note, and he never would know a thing about it, would he? Why, of course he could. Well, <laughs> one of us could stand and watch while the other slip in and got it. <laughs> I don't wouldn't old Lom be proud of me if I could get that note back. <laughs> now, Grandpa. Now, we won't let on to him that uh, nothing about it, see. And then in the morning, when I come down to the store here, well, I'll just walk right in and hand it to old Lum. Yeah. <laughs> won't he be surprised to me if I don't be his eyes above all pussy? <laughs> Square won't have much of a case against the old fellows if Abner can get that note back.
everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. For a cool, refreshing summer drink, Horlicks malted milk cannot be beaten. Try it for lunch sometime. Dietitians say that most of us would be much better off if we cut down on our usual lunch. Anyone who has to work, they say, should avoid too much to eat at noon. Heavy food cuts down on efficiency, general fitness, and alertness. That's why they often suggest a good glass full of Horlicks for lunch in summer. Horlicks won't give you that hot, stuffy feeling that a heavy, hard-to-digest lunch so often leaves. It'll help refresh you, giving you energy to carry on. That's because Horlicks is a well-balanced food, containing nourishing and energizing elements. Just try it yourself. You can get a package of Horlicks from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Yesterday, when Lum left for the county seat to seek legal help for the court battle which Squire Kemp has threatened over the injuries he received in Lum and Abner's theater last week, Abner and Grandpappy Spears concocted the idea of raiding the Squire's home in an effort to recover a note they wrote Squire, which they now believe will be especially damaging to their side of the case. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Dick Huddleston just entering the Jotham Down store in response to an urgent call from Lum. Listen. Well, Dick, I'm sure glad you come over. Yeah, what's the matter? What's happened, Lum? Well, it's about Abner. I'm feared he's got himself into some serious trouble. Abner? What kind of trouble? Well, they've got him under arrest for burglary. Burglary? Abner? Yes, sir. He got me up at 3 o'clock this morning to make him bond for him. Who did? What do you mean, The Mom? sheriff. The sheriff from the county seat. They arrested him last night for breaking in a house. Now, wait a minute, Lum. <laughs> now, you know Abner hasn't broken into anybody's house. He did? He did. That meant to it himself. Him and Grandpappy Spears both. But they never catch Grandpappy. Oh, you tell me the truth, Lum. I never was more serious in my life. I'm so dead blame disgusted with him, I don't know what to do. Well, what would Abner and Grandpap be doing breaking into somebody's house? Whose house was it? Well, of all people, they had to pick out Squire Skin. What? See, after me and you left here yesterday afternoon, Abner and Grandpap got their heads together and decided to break into Squire's house last night and get that note that we wrote him last week so they couldn't use it for evidence in that trial again. Oh, I see. And Squire called Abner and called up the sheriff in the county seat and had him left. Well, well, for goodness sake. So why in the world would he try to do anything like that? I don't know. I reckon they never stopped to think it'd be housebreaking. Of course, Squire will make it twice as hard on him as anybody else would. Why, of course, he This is just a chance that Squire's been looking for to get even with you fellas. Then, yeah, if he pushes them charge against Abner, why, well, you're bound to go to the penitentiary just short of the world. They caught him right now. Well, what does Abner have to say about it? Now, I don't know. I said disgusted. I didn't even talk to him about it. He was crying, of course. Scared to death that Elizabeth will find out about it. Well, that beats anything that I ever heard of. I called you over, Dick. Thought maybe I could get you to talk to Squire and see if you couldn't get him not to press the charges again. Well, I don't know um, whether I could do much good or not. Squire hasn't got a whole lot of use for me now. <laughs> you know, I was one of the complaining witnesses in that trial to close up the theater over there. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Of course, I'll be glad to help all the can. Well, we've got to do something, Dick. Squire's got him charged with housebreaking, and stealing, and grand larcenies, and packing firearms, and everything. Abner didn't hold him up with a gun, did he? I don't know what he done. I just signed the bond and went on back to bed. Well, we might call Squire over here and talk to him. Might be able to reason with him. Yeah, step there to the phone and call him up, Dick. He can't hurt nothing. Uh, what's his name? Uh, two shorts and along. Two shorts and along. Better not say nothing over the party line about Abner being arrested. Don't want everybody in town to know. No, no, I won't. Tell him to come right over if he can't. Yeah, wait. Hello? Squire? Well, this is Dick Huddleston. Yeah. Uh, Squire, I wonder if you could run over to Lum and Abner's store a minute. Yeah, Lum and I'd like to talk to you. Yeah. Well, it's uh, about what happened last night. Uh, Lum would just tell me about it. Hey, don't tell him that. Anymore. Yeah, just for a few minutes, Squire. All right, we'll be looking for you. Goodbye. Said he'd be right over. Yeah. Might not be no good. We'd feel more like to push his charges as far as he can anyway. But we can't just sit back and see Abner railroaded to the penitentiary. Well, let's call up Abner's place. I'm get him down here, too. Yeah. He better be here when we're talking to Squire. He can explain to him if he wasn't trying to steal anything with that note. Yeah, I'll call him. I'll declare, Lum, it looks like you and Abner can get yourselves in more trouble than any two fellas I ever knew in my life. Hello? 
Lazy Dan? Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Lum. Here comes Abner and Grandpap now. Huh? There's Abner and Grandpap coming up out there now. Oh, uh, uh Lazy Um, uh, uh, how are you? Uh-huh. Well, I just thought I'd call up and see how you're feeling. Goodbye. Goodness, I never know what to say. <laughs> there comes the two criminals. <laughs> yeah, ain't that a pair of fine-looking robbers now? Pine Ridge is public enemies number one and two. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them arguing with one another. Yeah. Grandpap shaking his finger and having his face. <laughs> yeah, both of them laying it on the other, I suppose. Yeah, more than likely. Now, don't that sound just like I did them two would study us together? Yeah. Yeah, I guess they had it all figured out. So while you and I were in the county seat, why, they'd save the day by getting that note back so a squire couldn't use it for evidence in that lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, that's just about it. Then he's working a couple of young ones. Both of them ought to have guardians. <laughs> this is funny and serious, too. Yeah, look at the expression on their face. You want to see how serious it is. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, come in, come in. Yeah, hi the James boys this morning. Howdy, Richard. Morning, Mom. Howdy. I just called over to your place, Abner, and you wasn't there. No, I uh, reckon not. Uh, yeah. I was just telling Dick about what happened last night. I told you not to tell nobody about that, Mom. Well, Dick's going to try to help you, Abner. If anybody that needs help, you sure do. Yeah, and I've got some more trouble since I seen you last night. Some more? Yeah. Elizabeth. Oh, you told her all about it, huh? No, it's just a trouble. I can't tell her about it. And now she wants to know where I was at out till 4 o'clock this morning. Yeah, my woman's mad, too, and I can't tell her where I was at without telling off on Abner. Yeah, and if you do, Grandpap, your life ain't worth a nickel. If Elizabeth finds out about this, why, she'll just about pack up her blown and head right back to Texas. <laughs> well, she's bound to find out about it sooner or later. Well, I hope it's later. I want to put it off as long as I can. Well, tell us what happened last night, Edna. Just what took place. Well, the whole thing was Grandpappy's idea. I hit work no such a thing. It was, too. Talked me into it. And it's his fault I got caught, too. Him trying to slip in somebody's house when he's got the hay fever. Well, I couldn't help sneezing. I tried well, my best. Sit out there in the road and let him sneeze for five minutes before I went in there. Well, we don't care nothing about that. Tell us what happened. Well, there not nothing much to it. Me and Grandpad slipped in the house to get that note that me and you wrote Squire, and Squire's coat was hanging over a chair there in the bedroom, and just as I was taking the wallet out of it to get the note, why, this crazy idiot sneezed as loud as he could, and Mayor Skimp screamed, and Grandpad jumped out the window and run, and next thing I know, the Squire had me down on the floor sitting on me. Yeah, having her to run, too, if he could have found the window to get out of. Well, where did Squire get all these charges he brought against you, Abner? Lum said he'd got you charged with stealing and carrying a gun and nearly everything else but murder. Yeah. Well, he tied my feet and hands and then went in and called the sheriff. And while we were waiting on the sheriff to get out here from the county seat, why, Squire started filling my pockets up with stuff. Filling your pockets? Yeah, I put his watch and some money and silverware and a pistol. I don't know what all in them. Well, what was he doing then for? Well, when the sheriff got out there, why, why I told him to search me, and he found all that stuff in the pocket. Oh, my God. I never seen as much stuff as he stacked out there on the desk. Well, why didn't you explain to the sheriff it's why I put it there in your pocket yourself? I did try to, but he just laughed for the robbers always said that. Well, I'm too gonna fix it here, sir, and I thought it was. Now then, Abner's setting to tell the sheriff on me and get me into it. Well, you ought to be told off on. Uh, very high to anybody sneezing at the top of their voice. It's well, what? well, there's no use in bringing Grandpap into it, Abner. No. Wait a minute. There comes Squire now. Huh? Oh, my goodness. Let me get out well, of here. Now, just stay right where you're at. We called Squire and told him to come over here. We're going to try to talk him out of pushing them charges again. Yeah, I don't believe he'll ever do it. Mad as he was last night. He's more likely started up some more stuff to charge me with by now. Well, just let Dick do the talking now. Well, good morning, Squire. Morning, Squire. Come in, come in. Yeah, morning, gentlemen, morning. Howdy, Squire. Yeah, howdy. Come on back and sit down, Squire. We want to talk to you. Yes, I think I know what you gentlemen want. Uh, you'd like to have me drop those charges against Abner, wouldn't you? Well, I'll find it, Jennifer. That's just what we want to with you, Squire. You see, uh, well, I think that can be arranged all right, Lum. Uh, Abner, I wonder if I could talk to you for just a half a second in private. Oh, yeah, sure. Come on back to the feed room here, Squire. Uh, if you gentlemen excuse me, please. Oh, sure, Squire. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, he never acted mad, did he? No, he never. You know, Rum, I was just thinking this. This is going to hurt that lawsuit of yours, too. Do which our Squire brings up in court that Abner broke into his house, tried to steal that evidence that he intends to use in the trial. Uh, 
Could he just make the case that much stronger against you? That will show that you were afraid of that evidence. I wish I hadn't thought about it. Why, sure it would. Now, we've just got to get him to draft him charges. Oh, it'll just sense the case for him. What is it? Well, I think he'll be coming back already. Yeah. You do the talking, Gage. Well, I sure appreciate it, Paul. And I'll try to return the favor sometime, too. Not at all, Abner. Not at all. I'm just glad to do it. Well, gentlemen, Abner and I have got this all straightened out now. I drew up an agreement before I left the house, and we both signed it. And I'm going to drop the charges against him. He's got a copy, and so have I. Well, that's all that you wanted, I suppose. Yeah, I reckon so, Squire. Much obliged, well, good day, gentlemen. Good day. Yeah. So long. What kind of agreement is that? Now, let me see it. Yeah, read it, Dick. Let's see that. Well, for goodness sake. Go ahead and read it. What's the matter? Did you sign this, Abner? Uh, yeah. Well, I had it already made out. And he's got a copy of it, too. What is it? Look at that, Ron. You fellas haven't got a chance in the world of winning that lawsuit. Now, why in the world didn't you ask somebody? And let's see if you find anything. Well, we don't know what Abner has signed yet, but evidently it's something that won't help their case any when it comes to trial. to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Every nursing and expectant mother should know the value of Horlicks malted milk. It is one of the finest foods for them. Rich in full cream milk, in the strengthening and bodybuilding qualities of choice barley malt extract. It has been recommended by medical and hospital authorities for nearly 50 years. Horlicks, the original malted milk, is beneficial for both mother and baby. It can be bought at any drugstore. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Abner was caught, caught in Squire Kemp's home last night, night before last, rather, attempting to recover some valuable evidence that Squire intended using in his lawsuit against Lum and Abner. However, yesterday, Squire had agreed to drop the burglary charges he had brought against Abner if the old fellow would sign a certain agreement he'd drawn up. Well, evidently, this agreement is causing some more trouble, for as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at their store in a very heated discussion about it. Listen. Well, if we lose this case, you can just blame it on yourself. You had no business signing a document like that in the first place. Well, I never paid no attention to what was in it, Lum. So I just said if I'd sign it, uh, he'd drop them charges again. me. So I just slapped my name right on it. Looks like you're doing everything you can to help Squire win this case. He's got enough evidence now to where he can't help but win the lawsuit. He's got that note we wrote him uh, admitting it was our fault he got hurt in our picture show, and, and you went and signed this thing yesterday and made it worse than ever. Well, I still don't see what there is in it to raise him such a fuss about. Well, according to this, you went over there to steal that note from him because you feared for him to use it for evidence in court. Well, that's the truth. That was the reason I was trying to get it back. When I wasn't going to steal it, I was just going to take it. Yeah, but, Admiral, it looked twice as bad to a jury now. We could have made out like that note never mounted enough. But this shows right here that we know it's damaging evidence again. Well, you would have signed it, too, if you'd have been my seed. I'd rather lose that lawsuit than to take chances on going to the penitentiary for breaking in Squire's house. Yeah, we could have got you out of that somewhere, or other. Well, read that green one again, Lum. Let's see just what it was that I did sign. Well, this is a copy he gave you, but recollect, Squire's got one just like it that he'll bring up in court just sure as it was. Yeah. And that's all he wanted you. To whom it may concern. This is to certify that I burglarized bugger, I the home of M.K. Kemp for the sole purpose of 
recovering certain evidence which I knew Mr. Skimp could use in court to prove that we were liable for the injury he sustained in our theater. Yeah. Signed, Abner Peabody, and witnessed by M.T. Skimp. Well, that don't sound very good today, but... I was so sick of the best to sign it yesterday. I don't see for the life of me how we can ever get around the evidence like that in court. And the case is set for Friday, day after tomorrow. Mm. We've got two more days to figure out some way to win that case, or we're going to have to pay Squire the $1,000 damages. Well, I'll study up some way out of it. Well, the best thing you can do is just to keep out of it. Just let me handle it from here out. It took up all my time so far. I'm doing what you did wrong. Yes, yeah, getting to where everything I do is wrong. Well, Abner, I hate to keep fussing at you all the time. I know it's your kind of help, but you just keep making matters worse. Yeah, I do, don't I? The trouble is, you don't think things over careful. You just jump right out in the middle of things. You ought to look before you leap. Uh, when did I do any jumping? Uh, yesterday, finding this thing. You mean when me and Squire was back there in the feed room? Oh, yeah. Oh, I never done no jumping back there. So I just held that piece of paper out there and I signed it. Neither one of us done no jumping. Mm -hmm. I felt like it. Felt like jumping up and down when he said it, he, he was going to dismiss them charges again. They started breaking in his house, but I know. Well, I don't mean showing up jumping at me. Well, what other kind of jumping is it? Jumping. Leaping before you look. Well, I always look before I jump. Well, she worry about that. That would be a good way for a fella to get in trouble showing up. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a fella go around jumping without looking like he's liable to get bad hurt. Jump off a building or something. Oh, I ain't talking about jumping off or nothing, Abner. Well, I always look for a jump on something, too. Well, you still don't know what I'm talking about. When I say look before you leap, I don't mean look with your eyes. I mean... Well, that's all I've got to look with, Mom. It's mine. I mean, no, study things over care before you do it. Oh, you mean, uh, study it over careful before I jump, huh? Yeah, chances are if you study a thing over, you'll change your mind about it, not do it. Uh, I, I figure it's too high. Well, you figure it ain't the thing to do. It's always best to stop and think a thing over careful before you move. Uh, you, you mean just stand there and think? Why, of course. Well, sometimes it, that might work, but now there's others when it won't. Huh? It'll always work. Well, it might if the mule would stop and think, too, but I'd hate to count on that. What are you talking about? What mule? That and down there at Kalo's blacksmith shop. That and the kicked at me the other day. I'd have stopped to thank him before I jumped, or he'd have kicked the hip pockets right over. Oh, for goodness sake. No wonder you get yourself into now, so many... Wait a minute. Who's that coming in here? Well, right there. Oh, then I don't know. I saw him from us before, but I can't place him. Uh, more than likely some drummer wanting to sell us something. Well, I can tell him right now he's wasting his time. We don't need a thing, not a thing. I don't believe he's a drummer, though. I, mean, I saw him reaching something. Let me see now. Where was it at? Where did I see that? I don't know, Abner. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know who he well, is. Wait, 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 be quiet. <laughs> well, come in, sir. How do you do? How do you do, gentlemen? Is Mr. Edwards and Mr. Peabody in? Yes, sir. We're both of us in. Uh, this is us right here. Was there something for you? Well, yes. Uh, my name is Ferguson. I believe my firm is defending you in a damage suit. Oh, uh, are you at Mr. DeLonge, a lawyer? Yes, yes. They sent me out to get some additional information regarding uh, Mr. Skimp's accident. Well, fine, uh, fine. Good. Uh, I'll set right down. Um, uh, but I'll talk to you just a minute. Not now, Edna, not now. Oh, it's something important. Well, it's can can't you see I'm busy? Yeah, but before you start on just that Just take Abner. Uh, just uh, sit there now and don't say a word to Mr. Ferguson tonight. Just uh, excuse me, Mr. Ferguson. Uh, this is Mr. Peabody, my partner. Howdy. Uh, my name is Eddard, President Eddard. Well, glad to meet you, I'm sure. If you gentlemen now will just answer a few questions for me here, I won't take up just a few minutes of your time. Oh, yeah. Well, we want to help all we can. <laughs> Anything you want to know, I'll be glad to explain it to you. You just sit and listen, have you? Maybe you won't get us any more trouble if you don't talk now. Yeah, I'll just tell you something, Mom, before you start in. Go ahead, Mr. Ferguson. 
Well, the case is coming up Friday, and we just uh, want to get the inside story of the accident. Mm-hmm. Remember, we're your counsel, and anything you tell us will be kept in the strictest confidence. Now, uh, now, nah, nah, I... Abner, if you open your head again, I'm going to pop you on. Now, hush up. Whatever you've got to say, you can wait till after Mr. Ferguson leaves. He didn't talk to me, and he's sitting there together. Now, what was it, Mr. Ferguson? Well, first, uh, I'd like to know if you saw the accident, either of you. No, I reckon it wasn't nobody actual saw it. They just found Squire laying in the aisle unconscientious. Oh, I, I pray why that damn Cappy said... Shut uh, up, Abner. Uh, well, no witnesses, then. No, no, no witness. Now, Mr. Edwards, have you the proper lighting in your theater? The, which was have that? the proper lighting facilities in your theater? Well, I don't know about that now. It's Dorothy Pitch in there. It's yeah. The wonder to me, more of them ain't fell down and hurt themselves in hand. Well, you'd say then that Mr. Stump fell because of improper lighting facilities. Well, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, Mr. Edwards, I have the questions all made out here. I just want to get your answers and then have you sign a statement for our file. Why, sure. sure. You don't need to explain them things to me. <laughs> See, I'm a justice of the peace out here in Pine Ridge, and I know all about legal matters that way. Yes. Uh, well, do you think Mr. Stemp was uh, badly hurt in his fall? Well, I don't know. He was sure carrying on like he was down there that night. Oh, I never heard such groaning and taking on in my life. You see, he claimed he was hurt in the back, and Doc Miller says you can't tell about that for sure. But personal, I don't well, think... Well, uh, do you think Mr. Stemp is entitled to $1,000 personal damages? Oh, I'll put that another way. If it had been you that uh, had the accident in some other theater and uh, you were seriously injured, would you expect to collect damages? Well, yeah, I reckon I would, but of course that is... Well, uh, I think that's all the questions that I have to ask you, Miss Edwards. Now, uh, if you'll just uh, sign this statement right there. I won't take up any more of your time. I see that you're a very busy man. Oh, yeah, see, I'm just as a piece, and I'm president of the store here, and, of course, uh, managing the theater over there. Yeah, that's right. President of the school board. All them things takes up about his time. Well, I'll just, uh, just sign this right here in the cupboard. Right, right there. Yes, yeah, so here's the thing. Oh, no. I don't think we'll have any trouble winning this case now, Mr. Edwards, and not with this evidence. Well, good, good. I'm glad to hear you say that. Say, uh... Is that all funny to find now? Yes, yes, I think it'll be sufficient. You want me to put my uh, notary public seal on it? No, no, that won't be necessary. That's all right, then. The door. That's all right. Uh, I think your signature will be sufficient. Well, I'll get right back to town and get to work on the case. Glad to meet you, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you. Glad to meet you, too. Anything else we can do for you, now just let us know. All right, thank you, Mr. Edwards. Good day. Good day. And then as he found out, he was talking to somebody that knows just about as much about legal matters as he does. Uh, what was it you wanted to say if I'll go down? Nothing. It's too late now. Too late? Yeah, I was just going to tell you who he was. Oh, well, I know who he was. <laughs> He's our lawyer. Ferguson, he said his name was. Well, uh, he ain't our lawyer, no such a thing. He's Squire Stimp's lawyer. I seen him and Squire talking the other day, and... Dick Cutterson told me who he was. And his name ain't Ferguson, neither. It's Clark, Clark, and Clark. Oh, my goodness, Jason. And there goes another link in that chain of evidence Squire is collecting for his case against Lum and Abner. This is Carlton Bridget, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horace, who now bid you all good night and good health.